What's up guys, Doug Polk here and we're back for another episode of Poker Hands and today we're going to be taking a look at a hand between Doyle Brunson and Elia Lezra from Poker After Dark. The two winners, him and Phil Luck, the two fields, you need to bust the other field now and that's going to complete all the beautiful game. They took a lead, you move the other field all in, that would be so nice. Don't you think? Luck? I don't know what you're saying, Phil and Phil. I'm one of the Phils, so what were you saying? I know I'm half a play. I see. I see. I'd say he's gonna bust you. Oh, oh, don't bust me. <laughs> it's 200. I owe you 100. It's 230. Oh, okay, 230. Locke don't raises the button please. with ace deuce suited, picks up two callers. Our hand begins with Elia Lazar coming in for a straddle from under the gun. So the action folds to Phil Locke on the button with ace deuce suited, and he comes in for a raise. He raises it to three times the straddle, which seems totally fine to me. At this point, Doyle Brunson looks down at pocket fives and decides to go for a flat, which I'm also okay with. I think in the small blind with the low pairs, you can go for a three bet or you can go for a flat, but when there is someone in the straddle that you'd like to play with, it makes a bit more sense to go for the call. Now to the straddle, Elia Lezer looks down at queen deuce off, and you know what? This is, I think, a situation where the fact it's a straddle plays a bit of a role. In general, I think if a player faces a 3x from the button, they know to get out of the way with a hand as bad as Queen Deuce Off. Not only is it a terrible hand in terms of playability, but in just raw equity, it's also not, not that good either. But I think when players have straddled, they feel a little bit of an obligation to at least protect their straddle. So he calls, and we take a three-way flop. Just fold every time I can. Brunson flops middle set, Ellie with top hair and Locke with a wheel draw. That's true. But I'll be playing trickle down sad TV poker at that point. <laughs> hey. Ellie leads out, lock out of the way, and now it's on yeah, Brunson. You're in, kid. No slow play out of Doyle. And no hesitation on the call from Ellie. The flop comes queen 5-3 with two spades. Doyle flops the set. Ellie flops top pair, and Phil Locke has a gut shot to a wheel. Doyle checks, and now it seems that Elia Lezra thinks his hand is good enough to bet. In general, in this spot, you want to check all of your hands over to the button, and if you were going to lead with some hands, I would certainly not do that with Queen Deuce. In fact, if Ellie's going to lead with hands like Queen Deuce on the flop, think about what it means when he checks. He basically doesn't have top pair because this is his worst one and he's leading into the preflop razor. You want to make sure to have a nice blend of hands in your check range on the flop, if not all your hands, so that on future streets you have hands that can call down, you can have hands that check raise, and you can have some hands that give up as well. By leading your weak top pairs, you make your checks too weak, and then the other side of it is, are you really that happy with your hand to lead? What if you get raised from either player? What if you get called? How are you going to proceed on future streets? Yes, if they call, you're probably ahead, but you might not be, and you're going to have to check at some point anyway. So you definitely want to be checking most, if not all, of your hands here in the big blind. Phil Locke snap folds ace to us on the button, which I might have at least considered my options. I actually don't mind fold, so I think that that was an okay decision. I think if you had a hand like ace deuce with the ace of spades, or ace four with the ace of spades, that might have been a nice bluff raise hand, so you could represent flushes on different runouts, and also sometimes hit a straight that will be very concealed. Now over to Doyle, and he has a set. I don't really mind either option for Doyle. I think in general I prefer going for a raise to try and build the pot against a player who probably has a wide variety of holdings. My only issue I would say with that is, when you raise here in Doyle's shoes, you're saying that you have either 5-5 five, five or 3-3, three, three, which is a very narrow range. So you're not going to get to have too many hands going for a check raise here and you're out of position. All in all, I still think raise is fine, it's probably the better play, you just have to be careful with how often you're, you're taking this line. Back over to Ellie, and with top pair, I mean, at this point, you obviously have to call. I don't exactly know how he's planning on constructing this range. I don't think he knows either, but he goes ahead and makes the call. Let's play the turn. Uh-oh.
You got big chips on there? One. Oh, Lord. Where'd you get all that money? He bought in again. He went to the money tree down in Chula Vista, loaded up. The turn comes an offsuit queen, which cements Ellie's fate. There's no way you can lead top pair, call a raise, get this turn, and get away from at least the turn and maybe not the river. It's certainly possible Ellie could have some hands like 6-4, or 4-deuce, or a flush draw, or maybe even a pair, I, although I would question that lead a lot. Why not? If he's leading his worst top pair, maybe he leads some middle ones as well. So in this situation, three of a kind is a very good hand for Ellie, and he's going to have to imagine he's not behind too often. Now, Doyle does improve to a boat, and this turn doesn't make any of Doyle's flop raises for value any less likely. It just means that now, if he does have a hand like, like a set, at least Ellie has some ability to improve on rivers to beat those hands. Doyle does decide to check, which I think is kind of weird. I think what this signifies to me is Doyle very much thought Ellie had some kind of draw and wanted to go for the trap. But in general, on turns like this, I think it makes sense for Doyle to bet with both his good hands, like his boats, as well as some flush draw type hands that he might have as well. By doing that, he gets to continue to barrel and win the pot more often. Now Ellie has a decision to make with his top pair turn three of a kind. His hand might feel strong, but let's think about the kinds of hands Doyle might check raise in the flop. If he has a hand like a set, he has a full house, and if he for some reason check raised maybe a strong queen, he has him out kicked. So this is not as slam dunk a situation as it might seem. With Doyle's range being so polar, I like Ellie's decision to check it back on the turn. Let's play a river. No bite from Ellie after Doyle checks the turn. Check. He's going to try one more time here. The river comes an offsuit jack, and Doyle decides to check once again. I don't really mind either option for Doyle here. I think in general I probably lean towards just going for a bet, but it doesn't make too much sense what Ellie has. It's unlikely a queen is going to be checking back the turn, so it looks maybe like Ellie had some kind of missed draw or just random pair, but I think a lot of those missed draws, or those draws on the turn, will be betting themselves. So I'm not exactly sure what Doyle's putting Ellie on, but he decides to trap his boat. Ellie with trips now has a similar-ish decision to what was going on on the turn, except maybe now Doyle could have hit a hand like a jack if he decided to bluff with a hand like jack-10 suited and then give up. I don't exactly know what Ellie is trying to get too much value from, though, other than maybe just that hand. Doyle's not check-raising a hand like pocket sixes or six-five suited in this situation. He's going to be check-calling those hands on the flop. So I, I think while his hand seems strong and it does seem kind of nitty, I think he should just check it back here on the river and not put himself into a tough spot that might happen. Ellie can't resist any longer, and he bets 15,000. Big raise from Brunson, 55,000 more to call. Now Ellie has to make a very difficult decision. What does Doyle have? He's saying he has a full house or maybe some kind of bluff. The thing is, he would have to be bluffing with a hand that's unlikely to even have a pair on the board because those hands would be check calling the flop. While this is just a really weird hand kind of across the board, Ellie can have some hands like full houses. If he did lead out with a two pair call raise like queen five or queen three, he very well might check that hand back on the turn to allow Doyle a chance to improve. So within Ellie's range, this is 
probably his worst hand he can bet for value. And a good general rule in poker is when you have your worst hand you can bet for value and you face a raise on the river, it's okay to let it go because you're going to have other hands in your range that can continue to where they won't be able to bluff you. You know, Doyle's risking 70000 here to win the 15000 plus the 40000 yeah, that's not exactly amazing. Those aren't amazing odds for Doyle. You don't have to call with most of your hands. In fact, you can fold over half of them. So I think in this situation, it's time for Ellie to put it down and move on to the next hand. Tough to imagine what Doyle would have check-raised that flop so big with. Check the turn and then check-raise the river with. You need me to call, Doyle? I'm so choked up I can't talk. So you can do what you want to do. You play solid all night and then you check twice into me. Solid all night. That is the bad news. Thank you for joining me today for Poker Hands. As always, remember to hit that sub button and join the empire.